Hi, Replay viewers. Thanks for joining me. Just prepping some bisque today. Oh, that's a nice little bump on my nose. Isn't that lovely? Show off my funny t-shirt. <laughs> Got it. Uh... Hello. Hi, Charsha. How are ya? I, uh, Wanted to throw this up in case anybody wants to find my stuff. I've been blogging a lot on my website, adding my Periscope stuff, prepping some bisque today. Get this angled here so you can see my sink. Actually, let me show you this. I have this really cool new rack. So, uh, you know how we've been sharing stuff through Facebook and Instagram and all this fun stuff. So, um, I think what happened was Cindy Guajardo down in uh, Colorado saw Lisa Lapella's. It is a hot rack. So, she saw Lisa Lapella's rack, and so she bought this rack. And I was like, I saw it when Cindy posted it. And I thought, gosh, that's an awesome rack. So, uh, she ordered hers from, uh, it's web rest store okay so it's web restaurant store all smash together dot com and uh, this one is a 26 by 18 rack and I'm five foot six so it's about six feet tall it's a little bit taller than I am and uh, it's kind of cool isn't it I went and got the OSB yesterday uh, and I had to wrap the edges because I I uh, was getting splinters in my fingers, but now I have myself a nifty little wear rack. Pretty cool, huh? So I just pulled these out of the bisque early this morning. They're cool enough now. I'm going to get them prepped. My bisque tends to get real dusty. Uh, and I have long just had the practice of rinsing all the bisque. This time I have to uh, be sure that I get some of these bits sanded. So... I'm going to use some wet paper. It's a Gator Grit 150 grit waterproof sandpaper. So I'm going to use this. Uh, I have some test pieces that I did in my last scope. This is how they look. They've got a lot of texture on them. Get that in there. See if it'll focus on the pot instead of me. Thank you. Thanks for the hearts. I appreciate that. Um, the one I'm really excited about, hold this out. Can you see the texture in there? Does it have a pattern that you guys can see? Now, I can see it because I know what it is, but I'm curious if you guys can tell what the texture is, what the pattern is inside there. Now, this is a little, what, nine inch dessert plate. And I didn't, I was gonna use it as a test piece, so I didn't trim the foot. Yeah, <laughs> you were paying attention. <laughs> I think it shows really nice. I'm pretty excited. So um, I've got, but it does have, let's see, kind of try and show you the texture. See, it's pretty good on that texture, right? So obviously this isn't necessarily going to be a plate somebody could eat off of, but I am going to try and knock some of that down a little bit with the High Greta with the uh, sandpaper and see if I can smooth it out a bit. Of course, when I add glaze to that, that will also help. Let's see, gingerly twisted, if I remember your PJ, right? Um, so that is my goal here, is to get that sanded down. Now the other thing that I did was I poked drain holes in all the feet of my wine cups so that when they're in the, <laughs> you're welcome, uh, so that when they're in the dishwasher, if a person remembers to just write, they could put that drain hole down and the water will drain out of the foot so that when you go to pull it out of the dishwasher, you don't get your feet wet. So I have a couple of these that I have to check all of them, but I'm going to check that for uh, burrs and get those cleaned off. So see like this one, this one's got a pretty good burr. So uh, oh, isn't that fun? So this is a Potter Co Potter's Council t-shirt. I don't know, I've had this for years. It's pretty uh, <laughs> pretty faded, but it's very funny. Um, so that is that. Uh, and yeah, so anyway, I just wanted to hang out. I'm gonna run some water. It might be kind of a uh, 
noisy, maybe not, hopefully not too bad. I don't like to run it too, too heavy, but I do want to get in here now. The other thing that I use are these. So I don't remember what brand this is, but this is probably a 50 grit sand block and it's foam, so it's contour, it'll contour. And you know, as I, so my cone packs, I put some cone packs in my bisque kiln, um, which I don't always remember to do. I remember to do it in my glaze, but I hardly ever remember to do it in my bisque because uh, I didn't pre-make a whole bunch of those. So, uh, but I did remember this time. And it looks to me like I got to about cone 3, 03, uh, not to actual 04, which is what I was shooting for. So I'm definitely having to do some adjustments with my uh, temperature on my kiln. And that texture softening up a little bit. Of course, this is slip, so this might be a little bit more... Um, challenging to knock down a bit. And I am using my iPad. Hi Judy, how you doing? Uh, and I have my iPad in a, in, a, in a holder on a mic stand. And it is, hey that's pretty good. And it made it even look a little more distressed. Charsha, do you, does it look a little more distressed to you than it did? It's always nice to have a second set of eyes. So I think that could be really, really interesting and it's much smoother. It doesn't hurt the fingers anymore. So I think I might just sand it a little bit more. Yeah, I dig it too. I like that distressed. So I'm just using the, um, just the regular iPhone app for, uh, for iPad. Actually, no. I'm using the iPhone app on my iPad. Uh, and it's the Periscope app. The advantage to me is that it makes it bigger. Uh, it's a little, the scale's a little weird, but it makes it big enough I can see your comments, which is nice. <laughs> and... Oh, I just saw it blank for just a second there. Is anybody, are you guys still there? You didn't see it? Okay. All right, yeah, so when you go into the Play, is it the Play Store? When you go in there, um, look for the Periscope app for iPhone, and it will download to your iPad. So, yeah, I'm liking that a lot. Oh, I don't know, maybe once I add glaze, that'll be smooth enough to eat off of. We'll find out. This is a test piece anyway. Obviously, I can't sell this. It's got a funky little lip thing here, and it's not trimmed, but uh, that's going to be fun. So one of the things that I've got going on, we've got here in uh, Helena, Montana. I actually live in Montana City, which is just right outside of Helena. Um, there's a, a spring art walk, and this year it's May 13th, and I haven't participated in art walk for three or four years because my daughter uh, is in ballet, and her old ballet school always had their rehearsals for their spring performance uh, the night of art walk, which meant I just couldn't do it. So I've been offered a place in our beautiful downtown area to uh, display my work for our art walk. And of course, I'm hoping for sales. Um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I uh, think I have enough work built back up now that I've gotten uh, back to work again, now that the studio's built. It is exciting. Okay, so this is the one that I think, let's see, this was the drape. So this is the one that I drape. No, this is not that one. This was the first one I tried, where I put slip on the fabric and then applied this that way. Can I remind? Can I remind you of what, Judy? 
Yeah, local gigs are fun. Sorry, I didn't re I didn't catch the first. What kind of slip and clay? Oh yes. So uh, the clay is a buff cone six clay. It is uh, it's uh, Plainsman M three forty comes out of Canada, and it is the the slip is red iron oxide added to that same clay body. So it's the same clay body for the slip and it's a buff clay. So this is the one where when Corey suggested I lay the lace over the top of it instead of, yeah, I, I mix, I, I get the clay in bags and then I mix the slip from that from my scraps. Uh, and I have lots of scraps, but I use, usually use my throwing slop and then some dry scrap and I blend the heck out of it. I don't necessarily uh, run it through a sieve or a screen because uh, I don't need it to be that fine. But yeah, that's what I do. And I'm thinking I might start playing with other colors to see what other colors do, but I want to see how this works with the glaze combo that I use. So, just get knocking down those rough spots. That's pretty nice, actually. So this one, I think, you know, you can't, up close, you can kind of see, uh, no, actually my glaze is a white, is the alabaster with the strontium crystal magic over the top. Uh, and it's pretty opaque, so I was curious, I'm, that's why I'm running this test, because I want to see if this iron will affect it in some way and if it'll translate through. And I think with the tr texture, it's right, exactly. This is just bisque I pulled out this morning. So this has, and I wanted to sand it before I put the glaze on it because it was pretty sharp with the fabric that I used to apply this. No, that's okay. Um, I used a sort of a piece of lace with a flower pattern on it and I wanted to use that to apply the texture to this and you can almost see some of the embroidery. I'm sorry if the light's kind of weird. Uh, you can almost see the embroidery on that. So I feel like the plate was the more successful surface and that's obviously because it was flat and Stephanie suggested that when I do that I put the fabric on the plate and then apply. Yes, the shine is just water. Um, Stephanie suggested I apply the slip through the lace, kind of like a like a, a stencil type, sitch, type of application as opposed to a stamp type application. Uh, and that seemed to work pretty well. Yeah. So the flat I think is definitely more successful because you can actually see the pattern on that. So I have to think about how to make that work on the more rounded surfaces. So now with this clay, like I said, it's really super dusty. And so I rinse it and I rinse every pot before I glaze it because that helps me avoid pinholing. So I bisque to 04 usually. This kiln did not get that hot. It, it got to 03 just barely. Uh, this, is a, this is a custom request that I got. The person requested a thumbprint. Now I haven't ever done that. I have my favorite mug is a Sunshine Cob mug, and she puts that kind of feel into her cups. And so I kind of knew what I wanted it to feel like from that experience, which was awesome. Uh, so I hope that this is successful. I hope that he likes his mugs. He wanted the the handleless mug. <laughs> Talk about keywords. That one I get lots. Handleless mug, even though they're really more like cups. So, yeah, so I just rinse all of these pieces. Now, if my daughter hears me talking, you know she'll be coming down here and wanting to perform for everybody. But she uh, took some pieces out of my, uh, out of the plates that I was trimming. Of course, you can see that one was too thin and I just trimmed right through it. So now she's got a rainbow she's going to paint. So she's pretty excited about that. 
Now, once I rinse these, I really have to check the bottom in, in the very bottom because that's where most of that dust collects. Uh, and I let these dry for at least 24 hours before I do anything with them. Okay, so working with my new wear wrap here, I can see some changes I need to make already. So, um, and I'm just trying to determine today, I'm trying to think about what I'm going to make for my, uh, for my spring art walk in downtown Helena. And I sell lots of cups on my Etsy site. My wine cups are pretty popular. And uh, so I'm going to be probably doing some of those. And, uh, but I'm trying to think of other stuff that I would like to bring that would be easy. The, the art walk itself is only three hours long, but you can guarantee that set up and tear down is twice that. So. Yeah, nice. Okay, so that burr. So, what are you guys doing today? I know I'm not the only one working in the studio today. We all seem to be kind of compulsive. See how that's, can you see how it's draining out of that hole there? It's kind of a, just a, there we go. Can see it draining out of there? I think that's going to work real great. I just need to be sure. Glazing, glazing. Yes, ma'am. For sure. I'll be doing that in a couple of days after these dry. Oh, good. Hey, Judy, what cone? I've been meaning to ask. What cone are you firing to? Glazing and washing sculpts. <laughs> Glaze day. For sure. <laughs> and what cone? So I asked Judy, but everybody else is here. What cone are you guys firing to? And what kind of atmosphere are you firing to? Firing in. Oh, cool. Oh, that's neat. Cone six. Okay. And you're firing in a, in a regular, oh, yep, electric kiln. Yep. Cool. S.L. Hall. Thanks for joining. So, yeah, so I'm firing, I fire cone six oxidation, electric, the low fire. Okay. 04 bisque. Low fire. So how low, Charsha? Okay, Judy, thanks for coming by. Have a great day. Oh. Oh, poor bisque. Oh, your kiln is running now, not you. Oh, <laughs> I misunderstood. <laughs> Cone 10 reduction today. Awesome. Okay, so Greta, does that mean I'm, I think you have a gas, you must have a gas kiln reduction. Awesome. <laughs> Your kiln is running now, not you. <laughs> All right, so those burrs are coming off pretty easy. That's getting to, that's getting to be pretty nice and get it up here so you guys can see it. It's nice and smooth. Not a fast enough typer. Yeah, me too, Judy. I suffer from that a lot. Uh, I, I'm a uh, one of these <laughs> with on the on the iPad. I can't. I just can't do it. My husband, he's like crazy. It's pretty funny. And then there's autocorrect, right? So, <laughs> God, drives me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> so the burrs aren't terrible. It's obviously it's wearing. Yeah. It. It. Me too. So the uh, the sandpaper doesn't last as long. So that's why I use. Just so you guys know, if you haven't seen it before. These guys for when I'm sanding my vinyl after it's been glazed, 
when I sand my final pots, I sand the feet with these diamond pads to make the feet really smooth. I'm not as worried about that right now. I'll do that later. Just really want to make sure that my pots are clean right now and don't have any uh, bad spots. Grab your finger and knock them off. Oh, did you? What brand did you get, Judy? I love the diamond pads. Okay. Great. Because at some point, mine are going to wear out. I'm going to need to replace them. They've been working for me for a long time, though. That's the other thing that's nice. They're a little pricey up front, but boy, you hardly ever have to replace them, it seems like. So, and I have some music on, except that I am wireless off my iPad, because my husband's a techie. He loves cool stuff, cool new tech. DiamondCoreTools.com Okay, Diamond, okay, I got this one from toolosity.com. So diamond, I'll have to I'll have to look at that on the replay and, and get that down. Because that would be handy to have. Always. Hmm. Yeah, so um, so my husband loves to look at tech. He likes specifications. He's very tech oriented. And so, as you might have seen on a previous scope, I was playing with his iPad to see how it works. Oh, okay. Same company. Okay. Um, I thought that it worked real well when I was testing with his iPad, so he went and got me my own iPad. Really sweet. Uh, and then it's like, yeah, but I, you know, I'm going to still need my iPod because I want to be able to play my music. It's like, no, no, I can get you on your iPod, I can get rid of your iPod and have you on your iPad. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't want wires running all over my studio. And he's like, no, no, we'll do it Bluetooth. So, so apparently the Bluetooth works great if you're not running any other apps. Um, but it definitely does not work with the Periscope, Periscope running at the same time. So the uh, I'm sure my iTunes app is still running my music. It just isn't actually going out to my Bluetooth, which is kind of fun. Now that one's a little bit more stubborn. It's a funny angle. So, yeah, I, uh, back to the diamond pads. Yeah, Judy, I think when you try them, you'll like them a lot. I really think mine are gonna need to be replaced. I've been running these guys for three years, maybe. So, they, uh, they seem to last a long time. Now, is that a crack? Oh, I can't tell. I was checking these for issues here. Uh, just can't tell. Don't know. Guess we'll find out when I glaze it. It's amazing how glaze has the ability to make cracks even bigger instead of pulling them together. Anywho, I'm sure you guys are just bored to death of watching me rinse my bisque and sand my feet, but this is, uh, that was a, that was a funny angle on that one, but that's nice and clear now. Just have to be sure to test it, make sure we got water coming out of there. That's working really nice. <laughs> I think my future owners of my cups are going to be really happy that they don't have to pull the dishwasher water out of that. <laughs> So, oh, and I have these cute little plates, so yeah, it works good. So these are the plates that I'm going to do the similar botanical uh, finish on. So I'm excited about that. Some little trinket dishes. Now, normally I uh, just do a slab and texture the slab, uh, but I wanted to see if I could throw these little guys off the hump. And for the most part, they were pretty successful, I think. Somehow it seems like a little more work to throw these off the hump though, so 
I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see if they can get a reasonable price for them. Otherwise, it seems like more effort than maybe what it's worth. But um, I want to have a more complete line of the botanical work. Uh, fill out the spaces. Right now, it's mostly just cups and bowls. So it'll be nice to have a few more pieces. So I'm going to apply for the functional, the strictly functional show. We'll see if I can get into that. I haven't applied to that one yet, ever before. So they've got some pretty amazing stuff. All right, everybody. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to need it. <laughs> you know, if this, uh, uh, if the textural thing with the fabric works out, it might really send me off in a different direction. My brain's been really working it for the last couple of weeks. So I think that uh, I have some ideas that uh, I'm going to try over the course of the next couple of weeks just to see if it works. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's always an adventure. I want to continue to grow. And thanks, Judy. And so, yeah, the, the fabric thing, I keep thinking about layers and textures and adding print, that tactile thing to it as well. So, so anyway, I think I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to go see who else is scoping, see what's going on and finish rinsing my bisque. Maybe be a little more productive today. Throw some pots. I'd like to get some stuff. See, I, I put on my throw and t-shirt, so I should go throw some pots, huh? So thanks, you guys. Hope you have a wonderful day. I love you, too. <laughs> Talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.